In central London, beneath the bustling streets, there are over 40,000 miles of sewers. The upkeep of the system is down to an elite team of highly skilled technicians known for centuries as the Flushers. Today, Rob, a veteran of some 40 years and novice Dan, are preparing to venture into a sewer off the Victoria Embankment to confront their biggest problem. More than 90 tonnes of fat is poured into the sewers annually by London's restaurants. In the system, it congeals and causes over half the 100,000 blockages the flushers have to deal with every year. We've had a report there's a lot of fat down here, so we're actually coming down to have a look and see how we're going to sort the problem out. They descend with gas monitors bleeping. If there are toxic gases, they'll quickly be alerted. Rob and Dan soon stumble on an old friend. Yeah, you've got a rat there, look. You're not going to find too many down here. They like it nice and dry. They keep up out of the way. They more likely drowned when there was the last storm. It, um, they can only hold their breaths for so long and then they drown the same as we do. Off you go. London sewers built in Victorian times were mainly designed to deal with sewage. Now, as well as the fat, recent cleansing products are causing big problems. It's the wipes and things, you know, the baby wipes, the wipe of the baby's bottoms and things like that. Um, they just don't break down at all. They go right the way through, right the way down into the works. They all have to be taken out before the sewers, sewage is actually treated. This build-up of fat and wipes creates a thick crust on top of the sewage flow. To gauge the extent of the problem, Rob has no option but to hop in and take a closer look. Go on in, Dan. You can, uh, you can, you can put the ladder in. Oh, thanks. Okay. If it looks as good as it smells... I just don't think about this when I eat porridge. It's not too solid, you know? If we drop the flow in here and then get a jetter in here and stir it up... Blast it through. Yeah, blast it through. They will be able to divert the sewage flow and then can use a power jetter to flush the crust away but they can't combat the smell. Face masks would be useless. When you're working in it all day long, it actually gets into your pores. And you can have a shower, two or three showers a day, and it just stays with you. With the blockage assessed and a solution decided upon, Rob and Dan can now carry on with their inspection further downstream. In central London, sewer flushers Rob and Dan are continuing their daily schedule. They're about to look at another sewer run off the Victoria Embankment in Westminster. Descending into this Victorian brick-built sewer, it's soon obvious that conditions are quite different from the modern concrete-clad system they came across this morning. The fungi that you see growing here grows on the fat and slime that's on the wall of the sewer. I don't think it's edible. I'm not going to try it to find out. I mean, as you can see, the flow coming through here is peak flow at the moment. We're, you know, sort of up past 12, 1 o'clock. Everybody's going to lunch, everybody's having their breaks and going to the toilet. This is sewage, as you can see. But in that, there's fat, there's rags, and everything else that um, shouldn't come down in the sewer system. As they go further down the flow to the bottom of the stairs, they can retrieve some samples from the build-up for closer inspection. The main cause of the problem, as ever, is thousands of baby wipes that don't degrade and the congealed fat from the restaurants above. This is the uh, so solid fat that's been down here for quite a while. You see it there? That's solid. And this stuff is a mixture of fresh fat and then this is all a mixture of toilet paper and everything. That's a wipe. As well as the fat and wipes causing so many problems, there are other regular blockages that Rob can't really do much about. Well, I'm not the Pope and I wouldn't sort of say don't use condoms, but um, try using maybe a few less. But uh, I don't know, I don't know what the answer is to that one. I suppose we'll have to live with that. You wonder uh, the size of the people that the condoms have actually been used by because they're bloody enormous. Might fit Danny. Danny's been up Leicester Square. He's saying he was up there the other week, so, you know, might be one of his down there. I'll put it in the bin. <laughs> That's it. Bin it, don't block it. That's it. Danny's got the motto. <laughs> Dealing with the unpleasant contents of the sewers is most people's idea of hell. But to Dan, with only two years' experience on the job, life couldn't be better. It's like a bit of 
a thrill, isn't it? If you had to think about the job that you do and, and, and what you were actually involved in, it would probably turn a lot of people's stomachs. There's not many people get to walk around under the streets of London. There's so much goes on that so many people don't know about. So, after a detailed assessment of the build-up, Rob now has a plan of action. That extends for about, I would say, about 30 or 40 metres up the line. It goes right the way through down the embankment. I would imagine there's somewhere in the region of a few tonnes of fat anyway. So basically, we're going to get a jetter in and we'll flush that through. Rob and Dan can now head back to the surface and make their report. In the coming weeks, a team will be back to lower the flow in the system and flush the build-up away. And the blockages in the sewers were quickly washed away by the flusher teams.